Hello guys, I'm Veronica Barreto. I'm an English and Spanish teacher and also I've been the head of the International Relations Office here at Instituto Federal do Espírito Santo, IFES. And I would also like to say to you all that we are so pleased to be here. It's an honor for us to be here. Thank you, you all from the organizing committee, my friend Tiago for having invited us, okay? Thank you again, everybody. I'm Anna. I work with Veronica, I'm her intern, and I'm also a college student. I have a, I am getting a degree in international relations and in Portuguese and Spanish to become a teacher. Okay, and as, as I said before, um, I have both experiences as an English and a Spanish teacher and also as um, uh, the international relations uh, officer here. So I could tell you that I feel privileged to have both areas knowledge. And actually today, I can say that my both experiences um, um, gave us, let us be here to share with you this um, topic about language teaching and internationalization of education. So it's, uh, it's so important for us to know uh, and to be aware as language teachers the critical role we play here in the internationalization of education. Okay, so let's get started, Anna. And what better way to start than with a quote this one is from Rita Mae Brown, which says, language is the roadmap of a culture. It tells you where its people come from and where they are going. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today, language. It is vital for us. It is vital for living in today's world. And that's exactly what we want to explore. So for starters, what is internationalization of education? This is a concept that has been studied a lot, actually not really much here in Brazil. We have Luciana Stalivieri, she's a very good researcher. And most of the researchers have decided that, or actually have come to the conclusion that internationalization as itself is not an end. That's not the goal. This is the means. This is the asset that helps us to get to that goal, which is making the institution that you work at or you study at even better. So cooperation and partnerships, territorial expansion and integrating an international and intercultural dimension are the ways in which internationalization of education is pursued. So you can establish partnerships, you can expand it may be territorial as in countries or nowadays you can use the internet or you can really integrate this international dimension in all areas of your institution. So to make it even more clear, the intentional process of integrating an international, intercultural or global dimension into the purpose, functions and delivery of post-secondary education in order to enhance the quality of education and research for all students and staff and to make a meaningful contribution to society, says Hans de Witt in 2015. That's our goal making a meaningful contribution to society. So how do we do that? Well, IE has three pillars. So language teaching, which is what we'll be talking about, cooperation and partnerships, and exchange programs. Exchange programs have been around for as long as universities have been around, especially in Europe. And to establish these exchange programs, you need partnerships. And to do all of these, you need language teachings. They coexist and they are all needed to really internationalize edu the educational process. Um, but why is language teaching so important though, like compared to the other ones, for example? Well, you need communication, for starters, in all areas of your life. We are communicating. You need communication, you need, inter you need emotional intelligence nowadays, that we talk a lot about that. You also need intercultural skills because you're, because you're not only going to deal with people that you have the same way of thought, with. For example, you need to understand how people of research and culture will think. You need to be able to empathize with that. And that's where global awareness comes in. You need to be able to not only read about those people, but really to connect with those people. And that's communication as a goal. 
Exactly that, Anna. And I also uh, would like to, to emphasize here that language, no matter which language it is, um, it's a passport, really, for the internationalization, you know, of any institution, of any company in the world. And when we talk about this language complexity, we're just advocating for not simply that the language is going to foster the, the internationalizing the institution, but more than that, um, it's uh, questioning, for example, how individual and groups use words and other sign systems in context to intend to negotiate and to create meaning. That's the most important thing, in my opinion, that the contribution of the language. That's why it's so com complex. And, and also, when we talk about the principle of reciprocity, that's a principle that's very used when we, for example, sign cooperation agreements in an institution, we believe, truly believe, that when we talk about this reciprocity, we mean that we value equally both languages, okay, of these parts. So, if we are negotiating meanings and rights and duties, we're also negotiating the languages. So you can see how important is the teaching languages for us here in this internationalization of education. Okay, let's go on. And we also have this uh, term, this expression, been created by Hudzik, comprehensive internationalization of education. That means commitment confirmed through action, international and comparative perspectives, shaping institutional ethos and values. It's an institutional imperative. It means that internationalization of education is not only desirable, it's institutional imperative. It's mandatory for all, for the whole community, academic community. And also, it means it's beyond campus internationalization. Okay, that's it. So, comprehensive internationalization is a strategic, coordinated process that seeks to align and integrate policies, programs, and initiatives to position colleges and universities as more globally oriented and internationally connected institutions. And you can see how important is our role as English language teachers, Spanish, or whatever language we're talking about here. So to play a crucial role in this internationalization process. And despite continuing this that Veronica was saying, have you ever thought about how that, that language that you're teaching is also a way of power? That's what Joseph Nye started studying in 2003. He was studying actually hard power because he is a researcher for international studies. And then he realized that although economy policy and sometimes military power are very important to countries and states, uh, more often than not, countries would rather use what he called soft power. But what is soft power? Well, it is virtually anything that a country is really good at and the country is so good at that the other countries are like, hey, I want to be like that. That's exactly what soft power is. And for example, education. Um, think about the Fulbright program from the US or the DAAD from Germany. Those are very successful means of soft power and we like them. We like to use them. They are very successful. They are very good. And that's a way that education has become a way of soft power. We want to become as good as educating people as they are. And just to explain, smart power, he said, is when a country is using both hard and soft power. But, okay, education is a soft power, but what about language teaching? Well, you're not only teaching a language when you teach a language, you're also teaching your culture, you're also te teaching habits, you're also telling all of those students that it is important to know that language. And why is that? When you're teaching English, 
it is because it's the language that is universally spoken. That's really important. Imagine if we could say that Portuguese is the language that is universally spoken. That would mean that we have so much power that we can influence what other people in other countries are studying. Or, or for example, if you're a Spanish teacher, when you are teaching Spanish to those Brazilian kids, you're telling them, hey, of course English is important, but that does not mean you have to ignore your neighbors here at Latin America. And that's why it matters. It matters for us teachers to know what we are doing. We're not only transmitting this, like, this um, knowledge that is closed in a box. No, we're teaching so much more and we're doing so much more. And sometimes we don't even know that. We don't even realize that we are literally helping these countries establish their own language as international. And that's really important because we need to have that in our minds when we're teaching. And Anna, before we go on here, I would like just to add some um, other information maybe to share with all of our friends here that when we are talking about this um, Modi plurilingual perspective, it's so important. It's truly crucial for all of us here because you know what? Imagine if we were just talking about Brazil territory. We have more than 200 indigenous languages here inside Brazil. We're not monolingual at all, absolutely not. So if we're talking about, you know, um, the sign languages we have here in Brazil, for example, uh, Libras, so it's another language as well and must be valued, you know, the way it is, because we have other people, for example, people who lives in the borders, for example, we have borders a lot here with our neighbors and, you know, and many other countries have the same. So we have to value their languages, you know, their cultures, their habits, the way they act, because there's always a reason for that. So I think it's so, so crucial, you know. So, um, and here, uh, exactly, I think we bring, we are here now in our last slide for you guys today. So the role of foreign languages teachers and in internationalization of education. So what's in it for me? You know, what, what am I supposed to be here? What's my role? You know, um, so I think that the two, one, I think Anna would like to talk about, you know, these. Very quickly to just because our time is running out. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to be aware, as I was talking earlier in the other slide, that we're not only teaching a language as is in a closed box. We need to be aware of what we're doing. We need to be aware that we need to teach other languages, as Veronica said, and we need a language teaching um, way that is for everybody. We also, after being aware, we have to take accountability for what we are doing. <laughs> because I know it's hard, I know it's kind of weird to think that, hey, I'm helping the United States by teaching English, but we need to know that. We need to take accountability. And by taking accountability, we need to think about in what way we are teaching that language. And why are we teaching that language? And why aren't, aren't we teaching other languages, for example? Mm -hmm. That's sure, sure, absolutely. And also um, agency, it's a very, very important topic here when you're talking about our roles. So what's in it for me as an English teacher, as a Spanish teacher, as, uh, as an English teacher, a Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese teacher to migrants, for example, you know? Um, so I have to be agent, I have to be proactive. You know, I have to give this floor to my students as well, no matter who they are, where they came from. So, and, and of course, when you're talking about human beings, we're talking about effectivity. Even the brain, the human brain needs emotion to learn. So it's crucial for us. It's critical to have effectivity to learn. So that's, I think, the, the whole... Um, it's stuff we brought here for you guys. We really um, tried to share with you our point of view, our, you know, experiences, mine and Anna, our everyday lives, you know, working together and, uh, you know, and the office, International Relations Office here in, uh, at IFIS. So 
thank you so much you know again for your attention for your time and we really hope to see you soon thank you so much thank bye -bye. you guys bye 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 bye